Hello, Plannerverse. Welcome to episode 94 of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Plannerverse. I am your co-host today, Karina Tovmasyan, and with me is the ineffable Steve Morton. Hello, Steve. Hello and good afternoon. How are you? Oh, not so bad. Got my voice fully back this time, which will good. be, I don't know, good news, bad news, depending on which side of the plant you're on. No, it depends, <laughs> depends on how many times I'll have to tell you enough of that. Keep going. We have to keep going on another subject now. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to episode 94, where we cleverly got an email from a fan named Nancy. Yes, I'm going to say S so I, I don't mess up her last name. Thank you, Nancy, for your question. I think Nancy met Steve at one of the PlannerCon events, and uh, she's been a great asset to the community. One of her questions was, can we clarify uh, values, mission statements, and, and um, vision statements? So what's the difference between them? Why do you need them? Is this something that you need? Can you live without it? And that sort of thing. We're gonna cover most of that during this episode. And I, I personally use them. I'm going to use Steve as my guinea pig and ask him questions that he doesn't know he's getting this time. Usually I like to trick him and, and have him glaring at me like a deer in the headlights going, what did you ask me? What what, what? what kind of answers do I have to give? My, answer to, the, my answer to the initial question was yes. <laughs> C, <laughs> the answer question. is C. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm going to start us off with a wonderful quote from Stephen R. Covey. And this is from his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he says, a mission statement is not something you write overnight. It takes deep introspection, careful analysis, thoughtful expression, and often many rewrites before you feel really comfortable with it, before you feel it is a complete and concise expression of your innermost values and directions. Even then, you will want to review it regularly and make minor changes as the years bring additional insights or changing circumstances. So I actually pilfered about 10 pages from my own Franklin Covey planner back in the days. And I chucked most of it except for the vision. And it's called the values and mission section. And it's even has a header and footer titled values and mission. Uh, I appreciate this because they also have the modern day Franklin Covey has a link that, that Steve is going to provide in the show notes that go through it's a wizard that walks you through how to create a mission statement i use a mission statement i also have a vision statement those are personal ones and i also have a values i'm sorry a mission and vision statement for my business i think it's it's very important to have one because it really sets the tone for how to create goals many people get stuck at goals they think well i just want something bigger better stronger faster whatever it is that you're after and it doesn't really uh, encompass who you are they're sort of generic goals that you see everyone going after and you really don't know why you're going after them i mean when when you write your goals steve where's where is your impetus coming from what what is is it just the momentary like oh well I, I could lose a few pounds or I'd like to, you know, work on more projects around the house. Is it just because you saw something that was unfinished and so now you've set the goal? Or is there a bigger, a more aligned mechanism in place for you in the thought process? I, t- I tend to be on it these days. I, I used to do these an awful lot with staff reporting and what have you. It was part of our staff reporting system at work. But... Having given up work, what, 10 years ago now, or nearly 10 years ago, it, it's been a while since I last sort of visited these in a sort of serious manner. But I must admit, in the last year or, t- or so, I've sort of started to sort of, sort of go full circle in, in a way mm. and started to sort of finally sort of settle down and sort of focus on, right, what should I be doing with my time? Um, because it's very easy to sort of get carried away with, you know, a lot of distractions and what have you when you retire. And so my sort of goals and things tend to be um, 
on the sort of the the, the bigger picture of life okay. at the moment for me um not the you know the very small details and, and things it, it might be quite a large ish sort of project to sort of take on board which will later then get broken down into sort of smaller chunks to make it achievable sort of thing um you know rome wasn't built in a day etc cetera, etc cetera. but yeah i, I as a, for personal ones um yeah difficult really i really haven't really thought that much about it to be totally honest that's great but certainly that's great because most, most people haven't right there's really no if so if someone yeah. doesn't draw your attention to it you're really not aware mm. that there might be a way to align what you want with who you are mm. so i think that actually brings us into let's clarify real quick because you actually you got half of the definition of a mission statement in your explanation of how you go about your goals. And you said, I'm trying, mm -hmm. you, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but you said something like, I'm trying to look at what I want to achieve, right? That, that was sort of what you yeah. said. So what you want to achieve, the objectives that you have is your mission statement. So mm -hmm. I want to achieve world domination by, having this podcast, right? Or whatever it is, right? That's So that's your what. Versus the vision statement is why or the desired future, mm. right? So, so I guess the desired future in this case would be the world domination, right? <laughs> and the way that mm. you're going about <laughs> it is by podcasting. <laughs> um, what you want to be in the future is your vision statement. Also, same for companies. So what they're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a better world. We're trying to, why, why are you doing all of these things is the vision statement. Whereas the mission statement shows currently right now what you're doing. What are you doing to align yourself with those goals? So where you are now compared to where you want to get to within a measured sort of period of time, be it next six months, next year or whatever yeah right and if you do the how you want to get there the how is part of the mission statement mm -hmm. so i'd like to achieve world domination by recording the world's best podcast in the world or what, whatever it is <laughs> right you want to come up with variations now but how do you get to a mission statement and how do you get to a vision because you could there's a infinite number mm. of totals that you can get to and I really like the Franklin Covey method because they start with vision, uh, I'm sorry, values clarification. And so it starts with understanding what your values are. Have we ever actually sat down to consider what our values are? Some choices they offer, and I think I'd like to extend this challenge out to all our listeners. If you have a Franklin Covey system that includes the values mission statement, I urge you to go and find it and, and, and use it. It's very helpful. Uh, some of the choices they give for values are words like authenticity, beauty, career, compassion, courage, education, fitness, gratitude, humor, love, loyalty, patience, respect, spirituality, and teamwork. And this is a very broad spectrum that, that the planning system is using, but these values are things or, or values that you uh, adhere to that actually make sense. They're an affirmation of your highest priorities and what actions you want to take to get there. So if you value gratitude, well, what is it that you're doing every day to show gratitude? If you value loyalty, what are some things that you do on a daily basis that show loyalty? Now, you may not know what your values are. So I kind of, Steve and I were talking prior to the recording, talking about how to identify and define your roles. And so let's say you're a wife or a mother. That probably means that you have courage, you have compassion, you have love, you have patience. So start with your roles. I would say the easiest way to identify your values would be to start with the roles that you have in life. Start with what it is that you do every day. Are you a student? Are you a caregiver? Are you a parent? Are you uh, someone who's a leader? Are you a husband? Are you an explorer? Are you a friend? Are you an artist? Start with those big headings of what it is that you do 
and then reverse engineer the process to find out what your values are. So I'm going to throw this back at you, Steve, and say something and ask you, so what are some roles that you see yourself currently in your life as having? I, I, I know you're a husband because Allison just won't get rid of you. So there's, there's, <laughs> there's that. So husband is one. <laughs> yeah. I still think of myself in some respects, even though I don't, you know, work in the true sense of it, as a manager and a coordinator, ah. if that makes sense. So I, I sort of bring things together quite a lot. And I still see that today um, in a similar way to what I did when I was at work, but it's just a completely different topic now mm. where I will come across, you know, two people with, you know, a common goal somewhere but they don't know about each other. So I said, oh, you need to talk to this person sort of thing, you know, and they don't know about each other. So you're a facilitator. But I just happened to. Yeah, that that's another way of putting it, yeah. Yeah, and you're also, I, I agree with that because I love connecting people that need to be connected in life. I love that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In in my, in my case, a lot of the, the thing is that the common element, of course, between the two people is obviously the planner. I mean, that's, right. that's how we move in the same circle right. sort of thing. But outside of that, you then discover that maybe they have the same job or they have the same interests, but that hasn't sort of arisen in sort of normal sort of exchanges and what have you. Mm. And it just happens to slip out in conversation somewhere. And then I suddenly c c sort of realise that these two people really need to talk to each other. And yeah. bingo, yeah. The, you know, the... the They've suddenly got a friendship or someone who's got similar challenges in life, maybe, that didn't realise was, was out there sort of thing. And it's quite funny in a way when you, you see that sort of thing blossom, as it were. Sure. Um, I would say as a result, you've also got uh, the value of respect because I've seen that yeah. in action for you. I also would say that mm -hmm. you would have the value of teamwork because I know yeah, teamwork's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. You and I work very well together. You also have, um, despite my begrudging comments, you also have a great sense of humor. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> though, yeah. though dry as it may be. <laughs> um, and so those are some values I'm just picking out of what the Franklin Covey had, had provided. Mm. And so using those, those values, you have already four or five of them, respect, teamwork, facilitator, uh, gratitude, right? So compassion, education, I think is another one for you because I see you're mm. very keen on making sure that you inform your community and educate mm. them on what's correct. Like, so here's how, if you want to open up your rings, here's a video on how to, how to yeah. swap out your rings properly, right? And you want to do it so that people are not snapping their fingers inside. You actually, right, you say, be careful, <laughs> don't put your, right? So, because if you didn't care, then you just say, hey, keep your finger inside, keep your thumb inside and see what happens when you try to swap out the ring. <laughs> be, be aware of the sharp edges when right. you're removing rings. That's right. the other one. Right. Yeah. The so metal edges are I would very say, sharp. I would say... <laughs> I, I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> God bless you, Steve. So I would say these four or five things would be a great start for you if you wanted to set up a mm. mission statement for yourself and use the Franklin Covey Wizard online to be able to build mm. a mission statement that allows you to set your goals up based on your own values. How wonderful would that be? to see that you're contributing on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis aligned with who you are. And the thing to remember with this is these are the things that you already do. Correct. But you didn't recognize them as being, you know, part of your, um, you know, character as it were. Um, so it's, there's nothing new here. It's, it's stuff that you've been doing maybe for years and years without sort of realizing it sort of thing. Um, this is actually we're just sort of making this is actually what Quo Vadis was calling the mental the month of men, mental hygge which is uh, mm. I'll, I'll quickly define hygge is like a Scandinavian it's a Scandinavian word that means coziness but it's the coziness that you feel when you come in out of the cold into a warm environment and so mental hygge this is the equivalent this is the mental equivalent of having done a task and not having had written it down, but then writing it back down so that you can tick it, tick it off the box. <laughs> 
right, Steve? These are things you're already doing. These are things you're already good at. And you just mm. haven't identified them. You're just sort of recognizing them so you can give yourself credit for it, more or less. Tick the box. Um, tick the box. <laughs> t- tick that box, yeah. <laughs> sort of, but it also will help you if you identify these different aspects. I think it will also help you identify um, sort of areas in which you want to improve on as well. You may be sort of thinking, yeah, well, I've got that sorted. Well, that, yeah, I do that, but maybe I'm not as would like to improve a bit more in that area um, and, and so on. So that helps you sort of, you know, map out what you're going to do maybe in the next few months, the next week or the next year or what you know whatever time scale you set yourself right because we're not setting the time scale you you set the time scale yourself here right um you you know you you can sort of define the sort of depth of the thing or you know there's no point in having you know five things and you're 10 out of 10 all well wonderful <laughs> but there's no escape for impro- you know, it's this continuous improvement thing isn't it really it is continuous development and improvement. it is and, and that's why i like looking at a large variety of words when i'm choosing my values mm. because i may not necessarily mm. have the internal vocabulary to see myself from the outside in right so it's an introspection and yeah go ahead steve <laughs> He's waving his One finger One of the things that... <laughs> wave, wave my finger. Uh, is we don't necessarily always recognise our own values, do right, we? we right. Other people will recognise them in us more so than we do ourselves because we don't like... Some people don't like sort of thinking, well, I'm just so wonderful at this and wonderful at that. Right. No, no, you tend to sort of play those down a bit. And some people sort of look at it in a negative way point of view saying i'm not very good at this i'm not very good at that ignoring the positive things and that's a mistake um i i used to do this for staff reporting i said no 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 let's let's look at the positive things that you've done in the last year right, or two right so you, you would look at the positive things and draw those out of the and if, if you that's that's a great point i i think people usually uh stress over evaluations at work because they think it's mostly going to be a negative critique but critiques can also mm. be positive and so yeah. i think if if you're wondering what you're good at or what contributions you make to the people around you just ask i think that would be mm. my first starting point if you don't want to look at lists of words start asking people what is, what contributions do i make to you on a daily basis what do you feel what kind of value do i bring to our relationship um, another book, if I could recommend, this is something that just uh, I remembered. I've used it regularly. I highly recommend it. It's a book called Style Statement. It's got two authors. I can't remember their names right now, but I can include that for Steve to put in the show notes when we're done. Style Statement is a workbook on being able to create uh, or develop two words that define your personality and your characteristics so that everything you do or all, all the actions that you take from in your life are based off of these two statements that you're making. So two words that really define, they, they, you focus down so far that you've gotten two words to define who you are and what you do. I think this is the, the purest or the minimalist guide to coming up with a mission statement because one word would be mm. a mission and the second word would be a vision. So you have a mission and vision statement in two words. I think that's that's a fantastic way to be able to hone down. Um, the reason we're doing this is we usually don't like to date our podcasts because we want them to be general and timeless. universal and timeless. But we are, we are going to identify that we are at least in the autumnal season of the year. And the reason that we're bringing this to you now is because uh, this is from my perspective I have had moments in December when I've had the panic of the heaviness of the end of the year set in. I didn't know what my goals were. I didn't know what direction I was heading in. And I don't like that feeling. I didn't even know what inserts I was going to be using. It was just everything was up in the air. And I've, I've gotten over all of that. But this is why we're bringing this episode to you now. Because we want to give you enough time 
to process this information, start researching what your mission statement might be, start researching your values, clarify them, identify your roles, identify how you're going to get there. And then I like what, what the Franklin Covey system has, a thing called activity number four. They call it be, do, and have. So if you're looking, if I'm looking at these value statements and they say, okay, well, one of the values that they have is courage. Another one is spirituality. Let's say I want to, I want to pray more. The, I see that on the list. I'm not there yet, but that's something that I'd like to have in my daily life. So you can now incorporate something or a value in your everyday vision statement going forward by being, doing, and then of course, having. You, we are what we repeatedly do, Aristotle said. So if you're repeatedly wasting time doing things that are unimportant, then catch yourself and stop that and do something completely different change where you're at so that you can change where you're going to be. Because if you want a prediction of the future, just see what you're doing today and you're going to get a very good prediction of where you're going to be in six months time if you don't change anything. Um, but that's why we've brought this episode to you in, in the autumnal season of the year. I'm not going to identify what month, <laughs> but <laughs> ideally, what we're trying to achieve here is a written proclamation of who you are and what you're about and the way that you go about doing those things because it's going to make your goal setting process so much easier when you get close to the year end or start of the year points that you want to set up for yourself as people do for year uh, new year's resolutions and so forth i might be jumping ahead of the game here a bit but having set up your sort of goal and visions once you get into um, applying those or activating them or executing them whatever you want to call it um, your journal if you journal can sort of help you focus on what achievements you've got in meeting those goals and meeting your vision by you know touching on the various topics you've sort of laid out in you know in, throughout the year sort of thing because again the actual sort of the time scales are you know short or long or whatever right. but you could certainly introduce that into into your journaling activities as well as your obviously in your planning activities as well of course but, well I, um, I think it just brings so much more clarity to your journaling or planning right being able to have mm. a centering and knowing the reason you're doing certain things, not because you're on autopilot, not because planning for planning's sake, but planning because you mm. have an absolute goal in mind that is aligned mm. with who you are. And if you haven't identified who you are, then how much fun is it going to be in the next couple of months to be able to sit down and come up with identifiers for who you are on mm -hmm. this planet and what contributions you make. I mean, I can't, I personally can't think of a better pastime to spend the last few months of the year doing something like that. And ideally, mm -hmm. this can even be done in planning groups for those of you that have meetups and get together. Why not make this the activity for the week or the month or the, if it's, if it's seasonal, maybe you just meet four times a year. I don't know what your groups do, but I would think that this would be a key practice to develop and then have that set up for let's say you've done one for one year and the following year you're going to review and check to see what distinctions you've now honed from one year to the next i would keep a running tally or record mm. for posterity to see where your mission statement was in one year and then five years later how, how it's developed i i would say no, don't get rid of it certainly not it's it's the building block of the next step the next evolution of you and I, I would also add to that by saying that consider them to be um live documents as well the the documents that evolve over time right and you, you might not have the the opportunity to sort of sit down and dedicate you know, three or four hours to, to actually the initial creation of the thing. But over a period of time, you might sort of build these things up. And as as time goes on, 
as you achieve various things, of course, you might want to substitute something new in. And so it becomes a sort of an evolving thing. So, you know, version one might look something completely different to version nine, sort of be it nine months, nine years later sort of thing. Right. Um, there, um, there, yeah. there are things that are... There might be things that you constantly have to work on, um, like me learning a language, for instance. Uh, that, that's going to be a <laughs> sort of a constant one for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I do try. <laughs> yeah, let me see on this list what else you could add to your list. Patience, how about a little bit of love, Steve? I could have a little bit of love from you. <laughs> I think that would be great. Um, sit down with your spouse, sit down with your significant other, sit down with your friends and, and do a list of, of things that how other people see you and how you see other people. And then take that list apart, unpack it and, and come up with your own language for who you are and what you want, what do you want to be going forward uh, or who you want to be going forward, what you are, well, it's clear we're all kind of human, except for Steve. We don't really know what he is. We've, he's part alien. You robot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so having said this, let me see. I'm, I'm hoping that my words have, have touched you all uh, to the point where I can actually affect you getting up and doing something about it. I'd really like for people... In the planerology world, I think this this is really what we're after, is getting people to live their best lives. And you can't begin to understand what's best for you if you're piecemealing it, but you can begin to clarify which direction you should be heading in, even if you don't have the right answer, even if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, even if you don't have that perfect job yet, you can at least start heading in the right direction by clarifying who you are, how you're getting there, and then making sure that others treat you the same way, that others see you the same way, because you only have what you tolerate. These and, and after all, these are things that you know you are in charge of um, your own destiny, in it, is it way? It's not like you're trying to sat satisfy some company objective or something like that. They're, they're separate to what we're talking about, really. Yeah, yes, you will have work goals and all the rest of it. Um, but in your own life, your own private life, outside of work, um, you, you know, you might want to sort of sit down and think, right, so where am I, where am I heading, you know, in life, be it. And that might obviously influence what happens within your sort of work career. Now, if you're thinking about, you suddenly realise that really you sort of start should start looking for a, a job maybe in the similar field or doing something completely different or... Um, as I once decided, maybe I really don't need to continue doing this. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> exactly it. I, it. I love that, Steve, because yeah. if you see that part of your mission statement is freedom of expression and freedom of time yeah. and all of these things, and you see your mission statement is not aligned with your company's mission statement, then look mm. for companies that have their mission statements aligned with yours. That's the easiest mm. career advice right there. So mm. there you have it. Steve, yep. any other final words? Not really, no, it's sort of opened my mind up a bit, as usual, when we have these discussions and share, letting everybody else share the discussion, as it were. Um, I shall again be going away and uh, trying out these wizards and things to see what it comes up with. And, um... <laughs> That'd be great. I'd love to find out where it says, be nice yeah. to Kadina. I'd like to see that part, too, <laughs> in your, your mission statement. <laughs> So where where can we find you, Steve? You will find me in the usual place of filofaxi.com, travelersnotebooktimes.com, and Mr. Filofaxi on the Instagrams, and where we will find you at this moment in time. And you can find me on <laughs> Instagram. Steve's making faces at me. On Instagram is Karina Tovmasyan, Throat Punch Resumes, Facebook, all over the place, getting in trouble, getting kicked out of Facebook. And um, Steve, any final thoughts? No, not really. Uh, oh, as usual, I will say if you've enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to like it, subscribe to it, and share it. And also, we will plead with you. <laughs> if that's the right word, to take a look at our, at our Patreon page um, to keep these 
podcasts advert free and you also if you become a, a patron of the page you'll also get um early access to the podcasts well they're obviously still going to remain free to everyone else of course but as a patron you'll get early access to the um the show notes and the recordings and everything else that we happen to uh, put on our page so take a look and you'll find the link um, in the usual places so thank you all for listening <laughs>